Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we will be talking about false start lead singles, which has been kind of been going around on Twitter recently, and a lot of you guys tagged me in it saying that you wanted me to make a video about some of the posts, so here we are. And a false start lead single does typically refer to the concept of an artist putting out a lead single and sort of signifying that a new era or a new album is coming and then the album never comes or something happens. And usually it's because the single underperforms in some way or another, which kind of just lets the label know, you know, maybe the album might not be as successful or outside events in the artist's life happens that kind of lead the album to be scrapped. So there are a lot of reasons that this does happen. And to be fair, in some cases, the artist just scraps the lead single themselves and is like, you know what, these aren't the vibes anymore, this doesn't make sense. And I will say, if you are interested in hearing me talk about the false start lead singles for Anti or the ones on XCX World, you can definitely check out my videos on both of those, and those videos are linked in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get into it. A lot of people mistakenly believe Crazy in Love is Beyonce's first solo single, and I know I've even said it in a couple of videos. But her actual solo debut single was Work It Out, which was produced by the Neptunes. Work It Out was released in 2002 as the lead single from the soundtrack for Austin Powers and Goldmember, which Beyonce co-starred in. It has a very 60s, 70s funk-inspired sound, perfect to match the film and a lot of Beyonce's musical inspiration. A review of the single said it solidified Beyonce as an MTV-era Tina Turner. Additionally, Work It Out was meant to serve as the lead single on Beyonce's solo debut album, Dangerously In Love. In her 2022 biography on Beyoncé, author Shepa Mokoena reflected on the gamble Beyoncé took with Work It Out. She wrote, It was a time when R&B sounded like R&B. It didn't have the kind of retro pastiche that Beyoncé was bringing in. This was also the era when you were hearing a lot of South Asian samples on rap songs and some R&B tracks as well. That was kind of having its wave at the moment. So if you weren't in the Ashanti Ja Rule kind of camp, you were going for the songs that were bringing East and West together in a way that felt new for the urban market. And then over in the corner, there's Beyonce doing Work It Out. It was also noted that while the Neptunes had produced retro-inspired songs before, they were more typically known for their futuristic experimental sound. The Work It Out video is also 70s inspired, complete with a Kim Kimball styled afro and several Bob Mackie archive dresses. Unexpectedly, Work It Out didn't even chart on the Hot 100 in the weeks following its debut. The song also received mixed reviews. Beyoncé was intended to be the second member of Destiny's Child to release her solo album, following Michelle's Heart to Yours. However, Kelly's album Simply Deep was released next, being moved forward after the success of Dilemma, her collaboration with Nelly, which went number one. Because of this, Dangerously in Love was pushed back to the summer of 2003, and as we all know, Work It Out was replaced by Crazy in Love as the lead single. It still has a 70s funk inspiration, sampling the shy lights, but in a way that sounds more current, which the Jay-Z feature also helped. Work It Out was still included on some of the international versions of Dangerously in Love. This all worked out for the better as Crazy in Love debuted at number one in the charts. All four singles from Dangerously in Love charted in the top five on Billboard, and the album won five Grammys. And 20 years later, Crazy in Love is one of Beyonce's most celebrated and most beloved songs. Nicki Minaj released Massive Attack, which features Sean Garrett in the spring of 2010. It was intended to be the lead single from her debut album, Pink Friday. Massive Attack has a more tropical rhythmic dance sound compared to the more electronic pop that characterized a large part of Pink Friday. Massive Attack was scrapped as Pink Friday's lead single due to its performance as it debuted at number 22 on the bubbling undercharts. Sean Garrett said he'd been given less creative control by Nicki than previous artists he'd work with. Not only was he featured on Massive Attack, he'd also produced it along with Alex the Kid. Garrett said, I didn't like the mix on it and I love Nikki to death. We just had creative differences as well. I love Nikki. I don't even feel bad about that. Massive Attack was huge. Everyone still asks me about Massive Attack all the time. You gotta take the good with the bad. You can't always get it right all the time. This girl was the biggest conversation in music. My biggest thing is that it's something you don't blast off with funk flex. At the end of the day, I love Nikki and she's a fucking boss. I had to give her room to do what she wanted to do. I'll take responsibility for it not being a huge radio smash, but the fact that you can bring it up and everyone brings it up. Instead, Your Love became Pink Friday's lead single and it ended up peaking at number 14 on the Hot 100, which was a much stronger performance. Nikki followed with the singles Check It Out, Right Through Me, Moment for Life, and Super Bass. Super Bass was the best performing single on Pink Friday, peaking at number three. Garrett has pointed out several times that despite its chart performance, Massive Attack was extremely popular online. The video was well liked on YouTube and even featured Amber Rose, who was one of the biggest it girls at the time in that space. 
I was in middle school at the time, but I remember so many people making picnic edits with the lyrics. I even remember my volleyball team, we had a team picture that said, you better duck when it comes, you better duck cause it's coming. But still, Massive Attack, like I said, is a fan favorite of Nicki's songs and it has been for over a decade. Doja Cat actually references it at the end of her song, Get Into It. In 2015, Ariana Grande dropped her single, Focus, along with a new platinum ponytail, signifying the start of a new era. At this time, Ariana was no stranger to a retro single. Aside from the work on her previous two albums, she was recently coming off the success of Problem as well as Bang Bang. So at this time, all eyes were focused on Ari. Focus actually wasn't the first time Ari scrapped the lead single, having done so with Put Your Hearts Up, which was intended to be the lead on Yours Truly. Focus, which was produced by Max Martin, was originally intended to lead Ariana's third album, then called Moonlight. The song is noted for its brassy 70s pop production and the Jamie Foxx song chorus. The music video is pastel and neon and minimalistic yet somewhat futuristic. It's also remembered for its heavy promotion of the Samsung Galaxy Note. Focus debuted at number 7 on the Hot 100, making Ariana Grande the first artist to have her first three lead singles debut in the top 10. However, Focus's position fell weeks later and the song underperformed, especially in comparison to Problem. Critics claim Focus sounded too similar to Problem, which Max Martin also produced, and saw it as an attempt to recreate Problem's success. In their review, Billboard called Focus a Problem rehash. Not only was the jazzy production on Focus similar to Problem, but also the way in which Ariana sings the song, especially the pre-chorus. D. Lockett, a writer for Vulture, claimed another reason the Focus rollout hadn't gone as planned was because it was way too manufactured compared to the releases of Ariana's peers. She wrote, It was calculated to a fault, too polished for a time when pop's biggest stars, particularly its women, were letting their flaws bleed into the music. Eventually, when the concept for Moonlight was changed to Dangerous Woman, Focus was removed from the standard edition of the album. In March of 2016, Ariana Grande released Dangerous Woman, the new lead single and title track. Again, the song was written and produced by Max Martin. It was actually initially meant for Carrie Underwood. Overall, Dangerous Woman has a darker, sexier tone, and the album ultimately helped Ariana transition into a more adult contemporary music and mature her image. The song and video showed Ariana wanted to continue to grow as an artist rather than keep reinventing the wheel. Critics noted it channeled her earlier music, but also showed progression from some of Ariana's earlier doe-eyed romantic songs. In March of 2016, Iggy Azalea released Team, the lead single from her album Digital Distortion, meant to also be released that year. Digital Distortion was intended to be Iggy's sophomore album. Her previous one, Reclassified, was a reissue of her debut album, The New Classic. With her new album, Iggy wanted to address some of the byproducts of her quick rise to fame, which was pretty controversial at the time. At the beginning of 2016, Iggy put out Azillion, a buzz single meant to promote digital distortion. Team was a single about Iggy having her own back despite all the feuds, the naysayers, and the criticism. She said about it, If I'm going to have everyone try to come at me, then I have to support my own self and I have to be strong on my own and I don't need all of that extra stuff. I'm just going to rock it myself. Fun fact, but B.B. Rexa was actually one of the writers on Team. The single marked Iggy's first solo release in three years, and a music video followed soon after. In the video, Iggy is chased down by these blonde digital holograms that appear to be distorted images of herself. Iggy promoted the song on daytime TV and on The Ellen Show, and also at the iHeartRadio Awards. Team eventually peaked at number 42 on the Hot 100. A couple months after the single dropped, Iggy's relationship with her fiancé, Nick Young, ended due to him cheating and having a child with his ex-girlfriend. Because of this, Iggy pushed the album's release back to the summer of 2017, wanting to take time to heal and work on new material. The second and third singles, Mo Bounce and Switch, which featured Anita, came in early 2017. Neither of those singles charted. Iggy planned for Digital Distortion to be primarily hip-hop, of course, as well as EDM, pop, and trap. She didn't want the album to be too feature-heavy this time around, but did work with artists including Zed, Lil Uzi, and YG. Azalea Banks and Iggy were actually supposed to finally put their differences aside and collab for this album, but it never got to happen. Because of creative differences, Def Jam refused to release any more singles from Digital Distortion. Iggy said in a tweet, Steve Bartell says he doesn't want to release another single from my album, unfortunately, so that's that. I'm very unhappy with the way that things have been handled, too. I will make sure it's not this way for IA3. I can assure you guys of that. Steve Bartels is the CEO of Def Jam, by the way. It was speculated, and very likely, Bartels didn't want to release more singles due to the underperformance of the first three. A cover was created for Digital Distortion, in keeping with the visuals for Team and Mo Bounce. 
Several songs from Digital Distortion were leaked, including a demo of Savior. Iggy later implied that she may or may not have leaked some of the songs herself. Sorry guys, I had an oral surgery last night and I'm on some pretty strong meds. <laughs> Iggy said at the time she was working on Digital Distortion, she had people on her team that she didn't really trust and didn't feel had her best interests at heart. She struggled with building a new team around her and said that she felt that even if she did have an album, she wouldn't have had a team to help her. In February of 2018, Iggy officially left Def Jam and signed with Island Records. Savior was re-released as a single featuring Quavo, being her first release with Island. By that summer, Iggy had scrapped Digital Distortion entirely and released her EP, Survive the Summer, which actually contains the national anthem. Iggy's sophomore album, In My Defense, would finally be released the following year in 2019. Around 2016-2017, Selena Gomez was working on an album thought to be called Seven Heavens, though this wasn't officially confirmed. The first potential single was It Ain't Me, a collaboration with Kygo. The folk pop song is melancholy and moody and fits the dark blue color Selena used to describe the album. In May of 2017, Selena released Bad Liar, an upbeat pop rock song about being unable to hide feelings for a new crush. It interpolated the bass line from Talking Heads song Psycho Killer. The triangle, along with Selena's light vocals, create an airy daydreamy effect to the song that keeps it stuck in your head, which is perfect for the song's theme. The next single, Fetish, was a sultry trap pop song featuring Gucci Mane. Bad Liar and Fetish especially are fan favorites and seem to be the promise of another successful era for Selena. Whether an album truly was planned for release at this time, whatever Selena was working on was halted in June of 2017 when she had to receive a kidney transplant due to complications with lupus. She didn't publicly announce the surgery until September of that year. The following month, Selena Gomez released Wolves in collaboration with Marshmello. Selena said she was excited to work with Marshmello and be able to step into his world. She performed the song live a few times, the most notable of which was at the 2017 AMAs. Someone on Popheads noted the similarities in the text on the cover art for Wolves and Fetish and said this could be further evidence that an album was planned. I also noticed that in the Bad Liar video, Selena's basketball jersey says Wolves, which could be another sort of Easter egg that these songs were meant to be on an album together. There were rumors that Selena's scrapped album was partially inspired by The Weeknd, who she dated briefly during 2017. It was also rumored that when they broke up, several songs were scrapped, though this has never been confirmed. Some have speculated that songs like Souvenir, which is actually on the deluxe version of Rare, were inspired by The Weeknd. Feel Me, which was also included on the album, was recorded way back in 2016 and thought to initially be for the scrapped album. Before its official release, Feel Me was leaked back in 2017. If there never was a scrapped album, it's completely possible that the album that turned out to be Rare was what Selena was always working on, but it underwent several changes over the years. Though Rare came out in 2020, the album was recorded between 2016 and 2019. Songs like Rare and Kinda Crazy had been recorded long before the album's release, with Rare having been shopped around to several artists back in 2017. Selena herself said it took her around four years to put the album together. She's since said that she has a lot more of those darker pop songs like Fetish recorded, so it's likely they just didn't make the cut for Rare. Finney's Selena mentioned she'd begun working with Phineas as well and wanted to record even more darker pop songs. And I, and it seems like several of her fans, wouldn't be mad if she decided to release them one day. In the summer of 2018, Tanache released Like I Used To, which was meant to be the lead single from her fourth album, Nashe. Nashe was the name of Tanache's alter ego, which is what inspired the album, and it was intended to be more uninhibited and more hip-hop influenced than her previous albums. Nashe was produced by Tanache and Hitmaker, formerly known as Young Berg. Only two singles, Like I Used To and Throw a Fit, were released before RCA shelved Nashe indefinitely. Hitmaker confirmed this was due to the underperformance of the singles and some now-deleted tweets. Tanache also seemed to confirm the news when she posted the single covers with a broken heart emoji. Several of Tanache's fans pointed out that of course the singles didn't perform well since they were barely promoted, which they blamed RCA for. Tanache agreed with the fan in a tweet and said her label had always sabotaged her. At the beginning of 2019, Tanache announced she was leaving RCA Records. Link Up, Feelings, and Cash Race, which were intended for Nache, eventually ended up on Songs For You, which Tanache released in 2019 after going independent. Also, while you're here, if you haven't yet, don't forget to check out my RCA Curse video or my Independent Artist video. Speaking of former RCA artists, Miley Cyrus released her EP, She Is Coming, in May of 2019. The seven-song EP had several self-confident, carefree songs like Mother's Daughter and Party Up the Street, complete with Miley's unabashed and in-your-face attitude. 
Aside from the obvious pop, several of the songs are trap and R&B influenced. One of the calmer songs, Dream, is a play on the Wu-Tang Clan's Cream and features Ghostface Killa. Dream is one of the songs on the EP where Miley talks about her drug use and the downsides of her excessive partying. There was an element of awareness and vulnerability to the EP meant to show Miley's growth and how she was coming into her own, evidenced by the title. Miley said that referring to herself as she represented the most confident version of herself. But still, this didn't feel like a complete era because it wasn't. She Is Coming was meant to be the precursor to Miley's seventh album, She Is Miley Cyrus. The album was recorded between 2017 and 2019 and was intended for release in 2020. Before the album came, two more EPs titled She Is Here and She Is Everything were supposed to come out. Miley had intended for the mood of the songs on the EPs to match the seasons they would have been released, which were fall and winter respectively. In January of that year, it seemed like She Is Miley Cyrus was still planned for release. However, by that August, when Miley released Midnight Sky, she confirmed She Is Miley Cyrus had been scrapped. Miley said it no longer felt like it made sense to continue on with the album and the EPs due to all the changes in her life. In October, Miley addressed the change of direction in an open letter posted to Twitter. Part of it reads, If you're reading this, know that I fucking love and appreciate you on the deepest level. I began this album over two years ago, thought I had it all figured out. Not just the record with its songs and sounds, but my whole fucking life. But no one checks an ego like itself. Just when I thought the body of work was finished, it was all erased including most of the music's relevance, because everything had changed. Nature did what I now see as a favor and destroyed what I couldn't let go of for myself. I lost my house in a fire, but I found myself in the ashes. At the end of the letter, she announced her next album, Plastic Hearts. Different from the hip-hop or Mark Ronson-produced pop, Plastic Hearts, which was released in November of 2020, was more rock-influenced. The album included features from Joan Jett, Stevie Nicks, Billy Idol, and Dua Lipa. Mick Rock, who'd previously shot artists including David Bowie, Madonna, and Joan Jett, shot the Plastic Hearts cover. The album included live covers of Blondie's Heart of Glass and The Cranberry Zombie, both of which were acclaimed vocal performances for Miley. Plastic Hearts was well received, with many critics commending the independence and vulnerability displayed on the album and Miley's ability to continuously reinvent herself in her music. And personally, I do think Plastic Hearts is my favorite Miley album. This is an unconfirmed case of a scrap lead single, but I thought I would mention it also. A couple months after She Is Coming, Miley released the standalone single Slide Away, so it came around the time that She Is Here likely would have come. The song is more stripped back, melancholic, and somber, and has been compared to 90s British pop songs like Bittersweet Symphony. Slide Away was released just a couple days after Miley's separation from Liam Hemsworth was announced. Though Slide Away was promoted as a standalone single, some now think it was possibly intended for a never-released Miley album that may have just recently surfaced. Last month, a TikTok user found an album called Down With Me made by an artist named Claire Pierce. Claire Pierce had no social media presence or presence as an artist, even an independent one, and the song sounded unmistakably like Miley. They were added to streaming services on March 10th, the same day as Miley's most recent album, Endless Summer Vacation. Down With Me sounded like a collection of breakup songs, and the lyrical and production similarities to Slide Away were noted. Several of the songs talk about drug addiction, destructiveness, and having to step away from a toxic situation. Some of the songs, like Right Hand Man and Not My Vibe, were also the name of songs from the She Is Miley Cyrus rollout that leaked in 2021. Down With Me has since been removed from streaming services, and it still hasn't been confirmed whether this was actually Miley, though it sounds a lot like her. Some even speculated the so-called secret album could have been fake with AI. Others have speculated these are actually Miley songs, and they were leaked and uploaded as an album using a pseudonym. And then of course, some just think that Miley put the songs up herself, but this doesn't really explain why they would have been taken off of streaming services. Down in the comments, of course, be sure to let me know which false start lead singles you enjoy, which ones you knew had been scrapped, or maybe the ones that you didn't even know had been scrapped, and you just thought that they were standalone singles. And as the tweet suggests, you know what happens to the best of artists. So at the end of the day, even though it kind of stinks that we didn't get a full album out of it, we still do get to enjoy these singles. And in some cases, we do get the majority of the album because the songs have been leaked. So yeah, as always, do be sure to let me know your thoughts. And before the video ends, let me just go ahead and acknowledge motivation because I know y'all gonna be in the comments like, you forgot motivation, you forgot motivation. And it's just kind of hard to talk on because I can't really with in good faith speculate what album it would have been on or what the era would have been like so motivation i said it as always thank you so very much for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe so that you can stick around for more also make sure to follow me on twitter if you'd like to keep up with me there 
And if you'd like to become a channel member, the link is in the video's description. Again, thank you so very much for watching. I love you so very much, and I'll see you so very soon. Bye-bye.